Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabori here, and I'm doing another movie review this week, but this time I'm actually reviewing a good movie, since I just had to waste my time with Escape Plan 2 Hades. <laughs> well, there you go. I'm about to review a sweet, hilarious, and fun romantic comedy that came out on December 16, 1987, which I really love. And still to this day, I'm talking about the original Overboard with Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell in their second film together since Swing Shift. And that was the film where they both fell in love with each other, became a real life couple, and they actually had fun doing this movie. That was directed by the late great Gary Marshall, Roddy McDowell who's also the executive producer of the film did a great job yeah because he's been best known for doing films such as the original Planet of the Apes and Fright Night come to mind he had also had Edward Herman yeah who went on to do other films too including Richie Rich and the town that dreaded sundown the 2014 meta sequel and no longer with us either, but he was also known for being in the film The Lost Boys. And Catherine Hellman from the TV series uh, Soap and um, Who's the Boss? Brazil, uh, Terry Gilliam, and all the rest. Anyway, I, I used to watch this film constantly on TV first time I saw this it was on HBO yeah when when we had cable uh, my family started watching a lot of movies on there and this pops up all, all the time never get tired of it <laughs> and for years to come it became a cult classic they started constantly playing this on TBS and TNT uh, it was on KTLA as well and this this movie could still be played on TV even to this day. I mean, they might have played on other channels as you expect. But apparently, this movie was a bit of a sleeper hit. Um, it only made twenty six point seven million dollars out of its twenty two million budget, so not bad because it came out on the holiday season. But Hey, I can see why people love this film, you know, through the constant repeats. Because, I mean, people still remember uh, Bodhi Hawn and Kurt Russell together. I mean, they definitely sparked great chemistry, no doubt about it. Even though this whole thing was a switcheroo here, because this is a movie about um, a heiress you know, who's married to a, a rich husband. Is very rude and spoiled. Hires a a carpenter who's very poor, but he has uh, four boys and his best friend. So he was hired to to do the job to actually remodel her closet inside her yacht. But apparently um, he uses only oak instead of cedar. So basically wants him to. We do it all over again, but but uh, he had to double his pay, so she refuses. But she had to dump him overboard, which later she wants up being thrown overboard after trying to get her wedding wing, and you know, she gets amnesia, and then as a sweet revenge, the, the carpenter decided to um, impose her as his wife. And trying to regain her memory, so it was sweet. And by the way, the the cover art that they chose for this Blu-ray, this is a 2014 re-release, because this was actually from a 2011 release from a Target exclusive. Um, and this is like a checkerboard type. Not the best cover art that they chose. I mean, you could barely see the images. In blue so they just photoshop taking the the two parts of 
of Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell, you know, falling overboard from the original poster, which has the yawk. So, this is the best they could do for MGM. <laughs> but, you can see the back right here. And of course, this. <laughs> and sadly this movie has no features other than the trailer which I think that's a shame I wish this movie had uh, a featurette along with a new interview with Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell to see what they think about it but I guess that's all we had to deal with yeah because I bet the remake had a couple more extras compared to this so that's embarrassing uh, the transfer has a grainy film stock. Not the best it could look, but then again, that's basically how the film looked anyway when when I saw it. So I guess in that way, you know, they didn't remaster it, but that's okay. Um, I could live with that. It's better than having the transfer being smeared with DNR. So that's for sure. Um, which, by the way, the cinematography for the film is done by the late, great uh, John A. Alonzo. And he's been known for doing uh, several movies, so he did a good job. even has a wonderful score by Alan Silvestri. You know, I, I never forget that score with the banjos playing. Uh, that's, that's the intro. I mean, it just... Very, very beautiful music, too. But they also had a song called Something Special that was uh, that was sung by Randy Newman. So it's a very sweet uh, song that, that was actually at the end of the credits. Um, which, interesting enough, uh, that song was also heard in the trailer of the movie Awakenings with Robin Williams and uh, Robert De Niro. So that's really interesting. And yes, the movie has a remake that just came out recently with Eugenio Davis and Anna Ferris. I just watched the movie recently and I'm going to review the film later, uh, but for now, um, I'll, I'll try to give my thoughts on that one, but as far as I'm concerned, I, I just mentioned in my review of Escape Plan 2 Hades that it was a shitty remake. But on the other hand, I did love Eugenio Davis's performance. So. I mean, still, I mean, there, there's no point on remaking this movie. I mean, really, there's even a South Korean the TV series that's based on this. So, I think that might be better than the 2018 remake, which is kind of funny too, because originally they were going to remake this film with Jennifer Lopez. So I'm glad that didn't work out. <laughs> but what can we do? Anyway, um, let's get to this review. Stars once again Bodhi Hahn with Kurt Russell, Edward Herman, Catherine Hellman, Roddy Medell, Michael G. Hegarty, Brian Price, Jared Weston, Jamie Wilde, Jeffrey Wiseman. Hector Alexando, who's been in several uh, Gary Marshall pictures, but he's also been in, in non-Gary Marshall pictures as well. And even the TV series uh, Chicago Hope. Swen Orle Forsen. Yeah, Gary Marshall, which, yeah, he has a cameo as uh, the drummer. And Ray Combs, who went on to host the, the TV show uh, Family Feud. Yeah, before his death. It's written by Leslie Dixon, who went on to write films such as Outrageous Fortune with Bette Midler and, and Shelley Long, along with George Carlin. Uh, she went on to write other films too, like the Hairspray remake from 2007. She also went on to write the film Limitless. Yes, Limitless with Robert De Niro and Bradley Cooper. Over which went on the star in the Civil Lines Playbook. Also wrote um, Mrs. Doubtfire with Robin Williams. 
many others. Um, and it's directed by Gary Marshall. He has been best known for films such as Pretty Woman, as well as um, The Flamingo Kid, you know, The Other Sister, The Princess Diaries, Runaway Bride, several others. He even even yeah, even Valentine's Day. <laughs> yeah. The movie begins when we meet a heroist named Joanna Staten, who's played by Goldie Hawn, who's accustomed to a wealthy life with a rich husband, Grant Staten the Third, who's played by Edward Herman. While having their yacht repaired in Elk Cove, Oregon, she hires a local carpenter who's poor as he lives with four boys after his wife died. He also has a best friend named Billy, who's played by uh, Michael G. Haggerty. Well, anyway, he was hired to remodel her closet, producing quality work by using oak instead of cedar that, that uh, she requested. But unfortunately, Dean had to put up with her rude and consenting attitude. He agrees to redo the closet, but he has to be paid a lot more than he was hired for. But she refused to pay, and it actually settles an argument with each other, which the entire crew of the yacht had overheard her and him through the intercom. And they actually applaud to Dean... <laughs> Because <laughs> Dean actually told her off, saying that her life is so pampered and boring, in that sort of way. And because of that, she actually threw him off overboard for her yacht, and I actually froze his tool belt and his toolbox out to sea. So that night, um, as the yacht sails away, Joanna suddenly goes on deck to find her wedding wing till all of a sudden she wants a falling overboard without everyone's help. So suddenly the next morning she was suffers from amnesia and was taken to a mental institution as the local TV news um, had found her being picked out by a garbage scout. Uh, once Grant spotted um, Joanna at a mental institution, so just to see if she's okay, apparently uh, Joanna had an attitude and she couldn't remember anything, and then Grant suddenly leaves uh, pretending that she doesn't know her. Also, uh, Dean saw the news while he was working at the bowling alley, you know, just doing some repairs and and that's when <laughs> he actually spotted her yeah with with Billy around <laughs> saying that he actually did saw her before while he was working with her as a carpenter so as a sweet revenge Dean decided to um, take um, Joanna and propose her as her husband under the name Annie Prophet. So, yeah, this is where we see a moment where a mental patient is actually eating black checkers. <laughs> so, so um, they, they had all of her stuff um, inside of the envelope, which includes the violet panties with JS initials on there, yeah, which will lead to the, the truth behind that. So Dean decided to take Joanna under the name of Annie Prophet all the way to his home where four kids had lived, which, of course, four kids by the name of Travis, Charlie, Greg, and Joey, all played by Brian Price, Jared Rustin, Jamie Wilde, and Jeffrey Wiseman. He also has two dogs. You know, one of them was a bit injured, but, of course, his entire home is a huge dump waste, so nothing's perfect, but I guess Joanna had to live with it somehow, and that's what leads to this. Over the entire month or so, 
uh, Joanna, as Annie, decided to spend more time, you know, cooking, cleaning, be able to learn all of this. She actually wore a gown that's <laughs> that's very huge, mostly because uh, as a trick to her. Um, she pretends that uh, she actually had a baby. She was pregnant, and that's why you know she got all fat. <laughs> I, I remember that line where she says, I'm a short, fat slut. <laughs> so, anyway, she had to spend time doing all the chores for the entire family, you know, cooking and cleaning, you know, working, you know, using a chainsaw to cut the, some wood, um, and all of that, you know, just washing clothes, I mean, her entire life is like a nightmare at this point. Yeah, that's why she started uh, doing that. Bup, 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 <laughs> uh, of course, uh, one day, um, you know, Dean was hanging out with Billy. You know, just you know, just watching a game. You know, having some beer and <laughs> hanging out with with four boys, you know, going around. Um, apparently, uh, she, she just made a cho chocolate cream pie, but the boys suddenly glue uh, her hands to um, the two plates. So she had to carry uh, uh, the chocolate cream pie on her plates, and then that's where, you know, she, she grabs the hose and started s spraying over Dean, Billy, and and the boys, and this is what she says: "Fire! Fire! Fire!" <laughs> yeah, I, I, and they, and they just chase after her, and they capture her. And everything. So, so seeing what Dean has been struggling all this time, you know, just you know, working, and also just hanging out with his friend at a local bar, you know, just having fun. Um, Joanna suddenly makes his dream come true by actually building a miniature golf course. So, based on her untapped knowledge of the seven wonders of the world, so that kept on going. And at this point, Dean suddenly fell in love with her. But unfortunately, doesn't tell the truth about her real identity at this point because he actually has a fear that she might be able to leave them behind. Yeah, you know, once Grant suddenly found uh, Joanna. Joanna was also taking good care of the boys, you know, as she was getting better and better at it, and trying to get better at everything she does just to regain her memory. Um, there's even a moment where <laughs> she actually stand up to the teacher, because the teacher you know, is very strict. I mean, she's definitely... Uh, performing discipline with all four boys. You know, they had to take a test, but they had to put in some poison oak on themselves just to pretend like, you know, they got caught by it. Yeah. Fortunately, you know, she got poison oak too. <laughs> yeah, but Dean also explains that he had it before. So they took him to bed. They put in some calamine lotion around. At this point on, Dean just celebrated uh, her birthday, and you know, things were going so well at this point, even though she later found out the truth about the violet panties, but then uh, Billy decided to take the rap from him to actually uh, tell him that it was his, coming from his girlfriend, so there you go. Uh, but meanwhile, Joanna's mother, Edith, who's played by Catherine Hellman, had threatened to castrate Grant if if they can't find Joanna, so she's been lost. Because if they can't find her, you know, she's going to actually uh, kill uh, Grant. So because of that, Grant suddenly went all the way to Dean's house and suddenly found Joanna you know, as Annie. And suddenly she regains her memory at this point. And this is where 
she finds out the truth. So now uh, she's been taken away by Grant. Went back to her to the yacht that she once stood. But unfortunately, she still remembers the fun times when she was with Dean and the kids and everyone. So she, and she's already having a great life already, but then she's suddenly confused. So she's just going back, trying to regain her memory about what was she like. I mean, why did? I mean, was she always this rude and everything? So. Well, apparently, um, she decided to go back with Dean, uh, along with the kids and everyone, because she thought maybe you know things were not right. I mean, even though yeah, you know, she is rich. But Grant refuses because he is God at sea. But Joanna tells him he doesn't love him anymore. So. Um, but Dean decided to have a plan with the boys decided to get her back so they actually went all the way to the Pacific Coast you know, they, they hire a Coast Guard to actually uh, to search uh, Joanna you know with their yacht and once they found them yeah she jumps overboard along with uh, <laughs> Dean so they got to get her Grant was about to stop them but <laughs> Until so, um, his uh, major D uh, Andrew just uh, dumps him out, yeah. so he helps him out to get her. So now um, Dean and and Joanna, well, had fallen in love with each other. So now they're together again, even though they're rich. So things have helped out. But of course, uh, Joanna suddenly replies that she wanted a little girl, too. And apparently that's what's going to happen later on. So that's what the film is all about. And I really enjoyed it, um, even to this day. Um, I still love the film and never get tired of it. <laughs> um, has a great cast all the way. They were all good together, including Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell, because they definitely sparked chemistry together, without a doubt. And the fact that you know this is the whole uh, fish out of water story for a romantic comedy, it, it just really works. And I really loved that. Uh, Edward Herman was very good too as uh, Grant. I mean, yeah, he was he's very funny too. I mean, you know, at times you know he. Even when Joanne is not there, I mean, he just, he gets to have all the fun, you know, dancing with girls and until, you know, he had to find out about, uh, about Edith, who's uh, Joanna's mother. They're trying to find out to see if, if she's okay or, or they're trying to find a way to find her. Well, that's always the case. And of course, Edith is always in bed, and you know she she also has uh, her, her dog too. <laughs> yeah, so it's very rich. Um, also, uh, Michael G. Haggerty, you know, is very good too as uh, Billy. They also actually have fun times, you know, hanging around, you know, doing whatever. Because I know he's also he's also the one who had to take all the bait for him. Like having to, uh, you know, pose all these uh, photos, you know, using all these fake photos uh, to add the image of of Joanna <laughs> and put it into uh, all of his old photos, you know, which most of which were from uh, his uh, dead wife. So that was the case, you know, just to fool her. So I had to do all the work. Um, uh, the kids were great too, it's especially Joey, who is the one who actually does the uh, the P. B. Herman imitation. <laughs> but he was the one who, who can't read, so teaches him for that. Uh, but <laughs> still, 
Um, they were all good. I mean, they weren't annoying. I mean, yes, they were complete uh, nutty and everything, but still, they were cool. Uh, and Rod, Roddy McDowell was also very good as Andrew. Uh, he, he was uh, definitely still some shows too, as the Major D even helps uh, <laughs> Joanna out. Yeah. Anyway, um, still remember to this day, I mean, I always remember those funny quotes like. Uh, I'm a short, fat slut, or <laughs> or even the probably the best one too was when uh, when she had to spend all this time, you know, working around uh, throughout the entire house, you know, doing all these chores. Uh, <laughs> she actually says, "Oh, my life is like death. My children are a spawn of hell, and you're the devil." Oh God! And then Dean says, "But baby, we like you." <laughs> yeah, that sort of thing. So, uh, it, it was fun. I mean, this is another reason why this movie should never be remade. I mean, it still holds up. I mean, even though the film is set in the '80s, it may have been dated over the years, but still, um, the chemistry between Russell and, and Han is an icing on the cake. It just really works. I mean, come on. I mean, I even wonder what they said about the remake, too. I mean, I have yet to find out about that. But either way, um, I mean, in, in comparison with uh, Eugenio Devez and Anna Ferris, I mean, come on. You can't see that. You really couldn't. And it's definitely truly my favorite out of all the Gary Marshall films that we have. In fact, I would put this on my list right up with uh, Pretty Woman, uh, Nothing in Common, uh, as well as uh, the, the Other Sister. Uh, I could also put in the, the Princess Diaries on there too, and Valentine's Day. And even the <laughs> some of the other good ones. It's certainly better than the Ex of the Eden, that's for sure. And New Year's Eve, as well as Mother's Day. Yeah, because those films suck, coming from Gary Marshall. I would also put it right. I also would put it right up there with Frankie and Johnny, because that's also another good movie. There you go. It got mixed reviews from critics. Apparently, it's at 46% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is pretty low. In fact, it should have been higher, like maybe 72%, maybe a little more. Uh, maybe certified fresh, but I don't know. Or just fresh, simply. But what can I do? I mean, these are the same guys who gave uh, Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle a pass. So what can you do? But I know, I mean, it is a re review aggregator. I mean, they collect all the critics' reviews, I mean, some of which can review higher, maybe, you know, just mixed. So I don't know. I just don't believe that sometimes. It just seems like a lot of good films are always weighted low these days. <laughs> Just proves how much of an overrated site this really is. But I do go to Rotten Tomatoes a lot. I know I don't always agree with it, but it's also very heartwarming and very charming. Um, it has a great soundtrack. It just works. It really does. So I just never get tired of the film before. Never have and never will. I give the the original film. Five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.